Hey everyone here, it's Brian with Home and Haven Farms. So today I'm gonna to be doing a video on how to smoke some pork. We're gonna be doing some hams today. Uh, this is that guilt that we had taken in uh, about, let's see, about three weeks ago now uh, to get processed and she was seven, 700 pounds live weight and then 504 hanging weight, so, so a lot of pork. So where I'm actually working all this in sections, I'll have three different days of smoking. Uh, one day I'm doing the hams. Uh, another day I'll be doing like the bacon and the loins. And then another day I'll be doing like shoulders, which we're turning into Arkansas bacon and other things like that. So I'm going to get a quick little view here for you on uh, what we have in the smoker. I just fired it up. So we'll get a little, uh, a few shots of the meat uh, prior to, you know, it actually being smoked all the way. And then I'll do another little update whenever I get done smoking at the end of the day. And, you know, we'll give you a video on slicing it and processing it so you guys can see what the whole process is and and how much work it actually takes to get it down to that final product that is you know like a, a really nice style gourmet meat so uh, give me just a second here and i'll get you a shot of that stuff okay so lighting may not be the best here um because we're in the smokehouse and it's already kind of a little smoking here because i just fired this up to get it up to temperature but yeah that is all ham slices that we got um each one of those is probably about anywhere from five to seven and a half pound slices and uh we like to do that for the reason of of making the measurement for the cure really easy but i'll, I'll do more on more detail on that later but yeah that's what some of the uh the meat looks like before we get going and this is just a simple little smokehouse we built out of kind of scrap materials i had around i already had like bricks and stuff around you know i bought a few little pieces of lumber for it and i just have a very you know very simple little setup i even set up a little fan here it keeps me from like i don't have to blow and maintain the fire at all like once i get it going i set that thing on and it uh i got a little trench here to funnel the air in and it just keeps it right on that fire it keeps that that smoke forced all the way through here and up into here and this smokehouse stays right at temperature of about you know 200 to like 230 degrees is where it runs when it's really hot so you know very very simple little design um but it it works really well so we'll do uh we'll do another little update later as i keep going okay everybody i'm back now i've been smoking this uh these hams for the last oh it's been about four about four hours and 15 minutes or so so far right now and i'm just letting my my fire die back here as i finish up so uh it's been going going really well so i'm excited to open this up i you know i've opened it up a few times and checked the temperature and i've been keeping it oh anywhere from you know 200 to like 250 degrees or so um when i'm smoking which was, seems kind of high but I'm, I'm wanting to do a little bit of a quicker smoke too and the reason I do that is because I actually have on this smokehouse while well, I'm waiting for this fire to die down I'll explain how it works I actually have uh, a temperature gauge up here at, at an upper level and then on the other side of the smokehouse down low I have another one now the upper one is always about 20 degrees higher than the lower one so what I do is I take the average so if the upper one's at like you know uh 240 degrees and then the lower ones at like 220 your meat that you're smoking is always going to be about 30 degrees below that so that's going to put my meat at about 180 190 you know somewhere in that range you know just because as it as it fluctuates you know you're not going to be on exact temperature the whole time but if you keep it in that range um the reason is is like whenever you're cooking your meat especially if you can get it up over 200 degrees for a period of time that's really good for making sure that it's like thoroughly cooked it's done all the way uh, as well as the 180 to 220 degree temperature range is really good for like being able to actually get like the smoke flavor to adhere to the outside of the meat and really like create that that good layer and you'll see here with the the cure that i did i just did a very simple like brown sugar and salt dry rub cure and if you guys want the recipe for that let me know in the comments below and i'm, I'm happy to post that um but you'll see as i open it up here in a second that it really almost has like it has this very caramelized look to it like with all the lard and everything it caramelizes very well and it almost looks like it has a barbecue sauce to it. so we'll see where our flame is here so it's it's low enough now that i'll go ahead and open this up and kind of start letting this smoke kind of come out a little bit 
Okay. So, what you see here on bottom, those, I have like just a little rack set up. I have like sand in the bottom and then some little fire bricks set up. And then I have these simple little, uh, oh, they're, they're for smoking. You put like wood pellets in there and they'll, they'll smoke and do that. Put that one out real quick. Um, and that, I kind of put my flavor smoke there. So I'll use like red oak or white oak for kind of the, the, at my fire to kind of build up the heat and use my coal base. And, and that's a good general like flavor of smoke to wood have on there, especially with pork. But then I'll also add other flavors. Like this one is a, uh, a four way hardwood blend. And then, you know, for the bacon, I'm going to end up doing apple on that one. So then I'll put that flavor smoke in here directly under the meat. So. What we can see, if you look in there, is a bunch of really delicious looking ham. Now that is all the ham from that 700 pound pig that we took in. So uh, when I put it in here, I had, let's see, I think I had like 35 pounds off the one side and 30 on the other, so about like 65 pounds. Um, now as you smoke it, that will reduce down. You'll lose weight. So you lose, when you do your initial harvest, you have, you know, your live weight, then you have your hanging weight, which is after you've dropped the guts and those type of things. Then from there, you're gonna, when you're leaving it to dry cool in the freezer, it's going to, or to dry hang in, in your cooler, it's going to lose more weight from there. And then when you process it, you know, you lose a lot as you go along to where when you get down to your final product, by the time you've gotten out your bone and all the other extra things, um, you'd be surprised what it actually reduces down to. And I think a lot of people want, can get upset when they take their, their animals to processors um, and then they get less back and then they, they kind of, they kind of think maybe they got shorted or something like that. And, and why that can be the case sometimes, um, that's actually, you know, we thought that happened to us and that's why we actually started doing a lot of our own processing. But, you know, you, you'd be amazed at how much it gets down. Now that is still a lot of meat, you know, and we'll get, I'll do another updated video, uh, tomorrow, uh, as we slice this all up and get final packaging and final weights. But this, these, these, uh, hams, these are all like deboned. What we do is I took these, you know, we're giant hams and I cut them up into, you know, about five to seven and a half pound chunks. That way it's, it's workable for the cure. And I can go through that process if, you know, and explain it further in another video. If, if anyone has any questions on that, um, it just makes it easy to work with too. And for your measurements and things. And then, uh, you know, from there, these little smoke, you know, uh, reduce down further. And then we'll throw these on the slicer tomorrow. So what you want to do is after they cool down here, you want to take them and put them back in your cooler and let them chill for like 24 hours. Uh, cause it'll make slicing them. They'll slice a lot easier when they're, they're chilled off than it will in the hot. But yeah, well, I'll give you another look at this. This stuff just looks, that just looks amazing. It, it really, really turns out good every, every time. I'm, I'm always happy, happy with it. The last time we did, uh, our IPP bore two chops and that, that was <laughs> some pretty good pork. So we're very excited to be getting some more of it and I've definitely been waiting for it. So, uh, you know, we'll have this pig and once we get through that, we have, the processing on all our turkeys that we'll be doing so we'll be doing some videos on that and then we, we you know we have other pigs in the future that you know we can do some more in-depth videos to kind of help people figure out how to do this process themselves because it, it it is a lot of work but at the same time when you learn how to do it it's such a valuable skill set to have and you can put a lot of very high quality food in your family's freezer and to be also be able to share you know with your other family and friends so thanks for watching and then uh, we'll continue this tomorrow as we uh, go through and finish processing the rest of this ham.